Now we've made it out back, and when I say out back, Sky, what do I mean? The world famous pre-adventure area. The world famous pre-adventure area, okay? So now, um, Sky, I want you to go over there, and I want you to grab you a stick off the side of the trail. Now, <laughs> why did I have you go pick up that big stick like that? Because it is interesting to the dog. Yeah, so what Sky's doing here, Sky, you know, these dogs, they don't really know Sky very well, and so they don't know that he's a super fun, loving, party kind of guy. And so, like, Sky was like, well, what if we get back there on the camera and the dogs don't want to follow me around? What if they don't want to look at me? And, and, and what if they won't follow me up on the brush pile? I said, don't worry about it, dude. Like, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to make you, like, seem like a fun guy to hang around with. And he was like, well, should I take a ball or should I? And I was like, well, sure, you could, right? But the problem with playing ball out here is we might lose the ball. Who knows? But you can just interact with the environment. When you go out, be creative and figure out a way to interact with the environment in such a way as you become interesting, right? That way you're never in a spot where the dog looks at you and says, hey, do you have the ball? Do you have the special treats? Do you have a leash and collar, right? The dog looks at you and says, hey, come on, Sky, I know you're a super smart guy. Figure out something fun for us to do. Right, so you can like grab that stick and the dogs are automatically going to come up and they're going to go, is that a special stick? And you're going to tell them what? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you're going to say, of course it's a special stick. Now take your stick and then run back there to the fence line and then come back and catch me. Okay, there you go. There you go. Good, good. You're going to just run around. Very nice. And so remember uh, earlier I was saying like if you want the dogs to act excited, how do you need to act? interesting and fun yeah you you if you want them to be excited then you got to be excited right. okay so now watch when you ran with your stick you were kind of like you kind of like sauntered a little bit right. you could take the same stick and you're like oh my gosh come on dogs oh my gosh oh look at these good dogs look at them go ah! the same stick everything's the same but like if you put a little more energy into your performance yeah. then guess what you're going to get out of the dogs you're gonna get a little bit more energy out of their performance, right? Even when it's hot and tired. Now I know you've been dog training a lot this morning. You get us a little bit hot? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Hey, uh, listen guys, like you, you always try to have empathy with your dogs. So Sky came out, you know, his mom brought him up to do some dog training. He's been doing really good, but we've been at it for three or four hours now. This guy's like, are we done? I'm like, done, we're, we're just getting started, you know? Okay, so sometimes even when you're a little bit tired, if you want your dogs to mind really good off the leash, you can't start to look like tired and down in the mouth. You know what I mean? You gotta keep your head up, gotta keep your chest out, keep your eyes up. Look like you're going someplace, dude. Like if I'm going someplace and I look like I'm gonna go have fun, right, don't you wanna come along? Yeah. What if I was like this? Come on, Sky, let's go to the park. Would you wanna go with me then? No, no dude, we're, let's get fired up. Yeah. We're fixing to go over there and we're gonna conquer the world famous brush pile challenge. Mm -hmm. how, how much more exciting a day can you have? Hey, and when you climb, hey, I'm just gonna tell you, just get ready for it. When those ladies see you master the world famous brush pile challenge, it numbers, they're gonna start rolling in, dude. They're literally gonna start rolling in. And you're gonna be, yeah, that was me, 100%. Okay, and now do you know where you're going? Cause now you start getting in front. No? See, see this guy, he's already starting to, he's starting, he's starting to internalize this, like, this dominant leadership style. He's starting to walk in front of Uncle Stoney and say, hey, we're, we're, you know, let's go where I want to go. Here's the thing. Where's the brush pile from here? He doesn't know. Okay, so if you're going to take your dog out on an adventure, what do you have to, what do you have to, what do you have to know? Oh, you got to know, you, you have to know your surroundings. You have to know your surroundings. You have to know where the adventure is going to be. Right? And so we're fixing to go that way. Hey, look here, watch me. Look, we're going that way. You see how confidently I said that? Yes. Yeah, Dale, so when I say it like that, doesn't that make you go, okay, well, I'll just go wherever Stoney goes. Yeah. All right, so now that's how you're going to be with the dogs, right? Okay, we're going that way. We're going to walk down here, and then we're going to climb up on this uh, brush pile. And when you climb up there, you're going to be like, I'm getting to the top of this brush pile. And then you're going to be like, I'm having a good time. And if you sell it right, then guess what the dogs are going to want to do? They're going to get, get, yeah, they're going to have a good time. They're going to go where you go, you know? All right. Have you ever climbed a world famous brush pile before? No. Yeah, have you ever climbed even a regionally famous brush pile? No. Have you ever climbed a brush pile at all? We're going to have to, yeah, we're going kind of. to have to review your parents' insurance, I think, before we let you climb up here. Kind of. ah, okay. All right. So, 
Charlotte, can you help Sky climb the brush pile? Sure. Do I need to get up there and help? Okay, all right. So uh, I'll give you, I give you guys a chance first. Okay, you just follow Charlotte. Now, what you're trying to do here, Sky, is you're trying to look at this whole big mismatch of branches, and you're trying to figure out where is the right place to put your feet. Well, guess what you're teaching your dog? Right you're teaching them the right place to put their feet so that when your parents take you on a big trip to Yosemite or something, you guys can go hiking and you don't have to worry about your dog not knowing how to get up the mountain without falling off. Now, one of the things that'll happen as Sky goes to climb the brush pile is that he's a little bit unsure about how to climb the brush pile, so he's not really looking like he's going up there to party. He's looking like, oh, I gotta get up here and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. And so for, for him to become a magnet for the dogs, he's gotta sell it, you know? He's gotta fake it till he makes it, right? So you gotta get a little bit more excited, Sky. Come on, dogs, let's get up here. Oh my gosh, look at these good dogs. Oh my gosh, look at these good dogs. There's some good fine animals up there. There's some good, I'll get up in this brush pile and I don't care if there's a bunch of snakes. Oh, I don't care what's up here. We're gonna have a good time. Oh my gosh, look at the fat boy coming up here. Oh, he's a good boy and Holly's a good girl and Portly's a good dog. It's a very good dog. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But you gotta sell it a little bit. And oh, now some of these dogs, uh oh, some of these dogs, they come out to the brush pile a lot. So, they're not that excited no matter what we do. And they're just gonna show them what they're doing, cameraman. They're just gonna go over there and get in the shade. <laughs> okay, so don't think that just cause you sell it really well, that's always gonna work. Nothing in dog training always works perfectly. But I can tell you for sure, nothing in dog training works like if you don't have the right attitude, okay? So now we're gonna come off the brush pile and we're gonna continue our hike and we might circle back and hit it again. Very nice. Now look at this little dog. Now I happen to know that this little dog loves treats. So I'm gonna go ahead and give her a little treat. Very nice. Oh, very nice. All right, and then we'll just head on down the way. Now one of the things you're always gonna be looking for on your walks, what do we call, you see this dog standing in the shade here? Yeah. Come up here for just a second, cameraman. What am I looking for here out of these dogs? How do I know that like I've got them under control, they're having a good time, and, and I don't have to worry about them running off right now? You see what's hanging out? Yeah. You remember what we call that? Fatigue. Fatigue meters. Guys, this is where you know that your walk is accomplishing your primary goal, right? Which is to get your dogs in a nice compliant state of mind. Look at that. Get those fatigue meters out, and you know you're pretty safe to go on and start really just like enjoying yourself and relaxing. And in the first stages of your walk, when your dogs are full of energy, that's when they might dart off the trail a little bit, or if you run into another hiker, they might go jump on them or be super anxious to play with the other dog, okay? When those fatigue meters start hanging out though, then you know you can trust them to make better decisions in terms of manners, okay? But listen, no matter how excited you act, once they start to get tired, they're not gonna give you that kind of energy back. Okay, so if you're, if you're going out and doing a training session where you're trying to get like something pretty impressive, the impressive thing that you're working on, if it relates to movement, has to be, has to be you know, it has to be worked on in the beginning of your adventure. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? And then like your manners and stuff, that's better worked on at the end of your adventure. Every so often we need to stop and remind them not to get too far away. Dogs! You call them, and you know you're doing a good job is if, you know, when you call them, they all run up here and they say, hey, what's up, boss? And I say, nothing, just checking in, just seeing how you're doing. Very nice. Okay. Now you have, let me see your whistle. You have one whistle, yeah. right? Uncle Stoney has two. I got a talking to him whistle and a yelling at him whistle. You only got a talking to him whistle, so we're gonna get you a yelling at him whistle. Okay. And why do I have two kinds of whistles? Uh, one's louder. <laughs> one's louder. Hundred <laughs> percent. One is louder. Okay, we're gonna go this way, cameraman. All right. Now, sometimes to make yourself interesting, it can just simply be a matter of effort. Okay, so I want you to to to, to blow your whistle, and I want you to just take off running down that uh, path right, and call the dogs, and when they catch you, I want you to turn around and come back, run back to, to me. Okay. And we'll see if any of them will follow you.
Perfect. There you go. Now turn around, come back, run, run, sprint, sprint. <laughs> Very nice. Perfect, perfect. Now, so what? So we had dogs and they're all scattered out. Yeah. What just made them come? Was it just the whistle? That's because that's the communication, right? right? You whistled and you said, hey, I would like for you to come. Now, a minute ago we whistled and not quite all the dogs came all the way to us. Remember how some of them stopped farther away? Okay. Yeah. But right then, when you took off running, why did they all follow you so far? Because they, they thought I was interesting. Because they thought you were more interesting. Yeah. That's right. Interesting and out of breath is what Sky is right now. Uh, okay. Now we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to do it uphill this time, right? Okay. So, cameraman, you can go ahead and go up the hill a little ways. And we're going to make a point about... Uh, about effort and expectation. So let the cameraman get up the hill a little ways. Go on up there pretty far, cameraman. Keep going, keep going. All right, so I'm gonna get a few of these dogs down here. Here, dogs! Come on, come on! Oh, that's a good fat boy. Come on. Very nice. Oh, look at that, Henry. He's a good boy. Right now. now, I want you to run. Hey, I want you to run up past the cameraman, and then I want you to run back past down here. But whistle and call him and go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, now, run back down here. All right, now, you notice how when you were running up the hill, it was a lot more effort. Yes. And when you were running down the hill, it was less effort, and you were going what? Faster. Faster, right? Okay, so I'm gonna let you in on a, a pro tip for dog training, developing a fast recall. If you're gonna work on the speed of your recall, should you practice it uphill or downhill? If you practice it uphill, that some people do that, because their dog has to make more effort to get up the hill. But a simpler way to do it is practice downhill because with dogs, like whatever they're doing, like once they start stacking those successes, that's just what they continue doing. So you can get your dog in, in the habit of coming really, really fast, okay? Simply by like on your hikes, structuring your recalls so that you do more downhill recalls than uphill recalls, okay? Because which one, which one, if I ask you, if I said, hey, we gotta do this five times, you gotta sprint up the hill and walk down, or walk up and sprint down. Which one would you choose? Walk up and sprint down. That's right, okay, all right. So since you chose that one, guess what you get to do right now? Go, <laughs> go, 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 wrong way. You walked up, now you're sprinting down. You forgot to call your dogs. <laughs> all right, no dogs in sight. Come on, you're gonna be interesting, right? And we're gonna see if you like this lesson. Look how fast those recalls are. Very nice. And what you'll notice is some of the dogs, because they're hot and tired, they kind of uh, they kind of lagged a little bit. But once Sky got far enough away, it's like a rubber band effect. The recall kicks in, and then they'll go really fast down the hill. All right, now that's one rep of twelve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more time. Even though they're tired, even though, listen, so right now, if I ask you to sprint up that hill, how fast do you think you could go? Pretty slow. Pretty slow, okay. But you can run down the hill almost as fast as the first time. That's right. Okay, you ready? Go. Hey, dog, go! What a simple way to get fast recall uh, exercises in. Very nice. All right, now walk at a fast pace, dude. We're just getting started. We got things to do. All right, now, cameraman, you can just fall in behind us. Okay, Sky, we're going to go around this way. All right. Now, so just on this walk so far, what are some of the key things that we've covered? You got, and got to be interesting, fun. exciting, right? I mean, you got to be fun, right? Now, being fun sometimes is just a matter of being creative, right? Okay. When we picked up the stick or we chose to walk downhill, 
Okay, what were we using? We were using the environment to our advantage, right? Okay, so one of the key things in terms of being fun is to make sure that you're being the right kind of fun for the environment that you're in. Yeah. Okay, because if you take a dog, like look at Henry, Henry's a little bit old and he's a little bit, you know, carries a little extra weight. If you said, hey, we're gonna go out and we're gonna do fun recall exercises, because I'm in real good CrossFit shape, I'm gonna sprint up the hill. Do you think that would be hard on an old dog like Henry? Yes. But what about running down the hill? Did he seem to do well running down the hill each time? Yeah. Of course. So when you go out and you're fun and interesting, make sure that you're fun and interesting in a way that's approachable for the dogs, right. that's enjoyable for the dogs. You can just pick a stick up, you know, when you pick a stick up, because there's sticks all out here, right? Yeah. Which, one, which sticks did the dogs really pay attention to? The, yeah, the ones we pay, the ones that we picked up, you know, and and that's really the key. So now we're just gonna go over here and uh, we're gonna chill out by the fire pit for a minute. I'm gonna let you rest. Dog training takes a lot more effort than 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 what it looks like on TV, right? Yeah. And uh, that's what you always got to understand when you're watching YouTube or you're watching Instagram. People are gonna like. People are going to try to influence you. And it's not just about dog training. It's about everything in life. They're going to always try to tell you that there's these easy ways out. Yeah. Like just do this for five minutes a day or do this for ten times a day, whatever. That's all, that's all people looking for excuses to be lazy. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Never look for an excuse to be lazy. Go out, put the work in, right? And then if you put the work in, oh, then you can take a little moment and you can be a little lazy. Here, get you... There you go. Here, Charlotte, you sit down there. You can sit down there, right? Okay, and y'all can be lazy. You start your fire. You can cook you some hot dogs. You can do whatever you want because, like, you know, you've put in enough work for your dogs to be good. Now, cameraman, here in a second, these dogs all settle, and when they settle, when they settle, like, you see, again, earlier we had the kids out, and I was telling you, I was saying, be interested in being exciting, right? Because because on the beginning of the walk, I want the dogs to be developing their physical skills. I want them to be getting in good shape. I want them to be burning calories so they don't end up being heavy later on. You know, but as much as going out and doing active things is fun and exciting, right? Do we get to do active, fun, exciting things all day long? No, nobody does, right? Okay, and so on our hikes, we always just kind of chill out and we practice. Uh, you know, saying, all right, we've done some work, now we're going to rest a little bit. And we want the dogs to have a good time, we want them to relax, and we want them to have the ability, okay, to, like, again, mimic our behavior, but not just when it's a matter of being excited. Um, okay, so here, set up right here. You sit right there, just like you were doing something. And then back up there, cameraman, and kind of pan. Watch you about to step on a dog right there. And you can see, you know, Henry, Henry, the, the collie, that's Sky's dog. Yeah. And most of these dogs are starting to chill out a little bit. Now, okay, you can come back over here a little bit, cameraman. Now, out of all these dogs that are starting to chill out a little bit, you'll notice that some of them are still raring to go. Right. Okay. Now, that's mostly genetics because these dogs were bred to do a lot, but every day we come out here and we do quite a bit more than what we've done today. Okay, so over the course of this next year, as your dog is maturing, okay, what I want to have happen is I want you to get in good shape, right? I want you to get out and I want you to find some complex things, both physically and mentally, to engage in, right? And as you're maturing, as you're getting stronger, as you're getting in better shape, then I want your dog to be doing that same thing at the same pace. D yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so every day, I don't want you to look at your mom and tell her, well, it's hot outside, it's tired. You say, listen, it's hot. I'm going to go out and, I, and I'm going to conquer that heat. There's a hill in your neighborhood. I'm going to go out and I'm going to sprint up that hill. You know what I mean? Or I'm going to walk up that hill and I'm going to sprint down it because my dog is still growing and like he gets tired. He's, whatever it is, right? You're going to come and you're going to find some problems and you're going to, you're going to find novel approaches to those problems. Like as we go, to, we're fixing to head back up to the kennel. Cameraman, you can just go on back through there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start talking to these dogs as I leave. But I'm going to look, I'm going to look like I'm doing something like I want to do. I'm going to look like I know where I'm going, right? right? So watch. Let's go. Come on. And as I'm on my way back up to the kennel, I'm just going to implement these principles at every opportunity. You see what I'm saying? If I see something in the environment, if I see a path that's, you know, 
less chosen, then that's the one I'm going to take. And what this does is this facilitates, you know, what we're really big into here, which is called learning by doing. You know, I'm not bossing this little dog to follow me around. I'm just going out and I'm saying I'm going to do fun and interesting things. And when I say I'm going to do fun and interesting things, the dogs say, hey, Stoney, I would like to come do fun, fun and interesting things with you. And if you do this stuff starting at your age, even when you're an old man like me, you'll be in good shape. And there's pretty much not anything that you won't feel like you can conquer in life. And that translates to all aspects of your life, whether it's dog training or, <laughs> or kid raising or business running or whatever. All right. You've been a good sport. All right. They did great with the dogs. And I know you ladies are going to want to be talking to Sky. So you put your numbers uh, in the comment section down below and uh, I'll hook you up. All right. I'll see you all next week.